this might be the most consumer unfriendly time World of Tanks Blitz has experienced all the way since update 3.8. So, is there anything good in the shop? What do you need to know about collector vehicles? That's what we're going to cover in this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's go. Times fives are incredibly useful to advanced players to grind tech trays, but if you're a new player, stay away from them because you don't want to grind tanks too quickly. The point of the game is to have fun, to enjoy yourself, and also ideally carry your old weights without being a detriment to your team. But as long as you achieve that, it doesn't really matter whether you get to tier 10 or not. So don't grind tanks too quickly. This is only for advanced players that already have some experience at tier 10 to grind extra tier 10s quickly. If you're a new player, grind out your tanks slowly. Take your time, then it's going to be good. Something like this, large researchers kit. This is pretty, this is a pretty good deal. Doesn't include credit boosters, unfortunately. That would make it truly valuable. It unfortunately includes cooldown boosters instead of credit boosters. That would make it much more valuable if it did that, but it's okay, right? Like, if you need the gold, if you need the times fives, it works, right? It doesn't include creds, so that's fine. Don't buy creds, by the way. This is not a grand deal. Do you want to spend a lot of money to get question mark return? Well, this tank section might be the one for you. We start off with the tank hunters, and while 7,500 gold is quite cheap, what we have here is unfortunately locked times fives, as pretty much all the time here, two pointless camouflages, a Krupstein Ruffin Traeger. This is a pointless vehicle. It's a T7, it's a paper tank destroyer. It's not going to be there to make creds. If you want to have fun, it can work for that, but you have to be a specific kind of weirdo to enjoy this kind of vehicle. So not going to get a recommendation for me. And the Kanoniak Panzer, well, the simple fact that the WZ-120 GFT exists kind of makes this vehicle pointless. Now, unfortunately, the WZ isn't sold properly very often. But then again, the value proposition of this vehicle isn't really that great. I don't recommend it. But if you're a tank collector, eh, it's cheap enough to think about it. But in general... I do not recommend this bundle whatsoever, just like I don't recommend the T23E3 for 5,000 gold, which is a joke at best, given that in most cases you can get a T-rate for 5,500 gold with more premium time, 30 days of premium instead of here, uh, 14. And now these times fives are also locked, diminishing the value of the bundle even further. This is a 3,000 gold bundle if we're looking at it, really, because this vehicle, again, it's a tier 7, so suboptimal for making creds. Also suboptimal for making creds because the penetration is very terrible and it's a medium tank. So not really that great. It doesn't even stand out much. It's just your average random tier 7 medium. One, while it can be fun with its high DPM, it's not really a vehicle that you primarily consider to grind creds or have fun with, so... Then we have the M60. There is a very simple question to ask about this vehicle. But why? Because this is not a real premium tank, and premium tank, collector tank, same thing at the end of the day. You can sell collectors for gold, even though I don't recommend doing that anymore because Wargaming wants to milk you even harder by having collector tanks be repurchased for double the price. Great timing, Wargaming, but first screw up the matchmaking and then be like, Hmm, how about we milk you more? So, ideally, don't get milked, don't buy the M60. Here's the thing, you don't own this. If you buy a premium tank, it's not your property, you have no right to anything here. That's kind of the problem. So, if you buy a premium tank, please be aware that the only thing you're obtaining is a license to use the vehicle. And Wargaming can do whatever they want with it. So, be aware of that before you buy something. Yep, because otherwise you're gonna be like, ah, why are they changing my tank? Because they can. It's unfortunate, but that's how the world works. And the M60 doesn't have a good credit coefficient or anything of that sort. You're just buying an M48 pattern. Again, not really worth it whatsoever. So, T4A, same problem here. It's just a T54. At least those are unlocked. So the value proposition here is pretty decent with the boosters and all those kind of things. But at the end of the day, don't really recommend it. It's a tier 9, so... Might and Onslaught. Titan HND. Bad tank. Times fives. Good. Action X, not a primary premium I would recommend at tier 8. It's solid, but not among the, the top of vehicles that everybody should have. It's somewhere up there. It's more difficult to play than most average heavies in this category because of the abysmally low alpha damage. DPM, however, is very high. 10 degrees of gun depression. It works great for that. 
but because the alpha damage is only 190, you can't trade with anybody. So this is very much a second class premium tank rather than a Chimera T42 Type 57, whatever else fits in there. It doesn't quite belong with those, but it's a solid vehicle. Value here, this is unlocked. 30 gold boosters. Eh, could be better. Not really great. Tier 7s in here. This thing's pointless. Like, it literally is pointless. Unless you like the aesthetic of it, it's it's literally pointless. Like, you're not adding much value. You can sell it for, I think, 2.5k gold, so maybe that's the value. But, nah, don't buy that. Don't buy that. And then you have the Relentless and Intrepid. Nah. There was the KV-5 and T-77 bundle, right? That I recommended the KV-5 and T-77 bundle, right? Because the T-77 is great. And the KV-5 is hella easy to play and can ram basically anything. Now this is kind of the opposite of that. It it costs more. The Samoa is marginally worse than the T-77. The Bizonte, you can't fight. It's a single shot gun that pretends to be an auto reloader, so... Ew. Doesn't add much value here. There are better vehicles. If this would be 10k, we could be talking about it. But given that this is even more expensive, nah. Very disappointing week right here. None of these bundles are worth it at all. I definitely would recommend saving a gold. Wait for a better time. And importantly, don't sell your collector tanks. Because even though you can buy them back for the sale price the first time, if you sell them after that, you'll have to pay double. Which is, uh, uncool. Then there's the Titan Chariot tier draw, and, uh, well, it's a draw. And again, same marketing trick right here with the one gold at level 8 to make you spend all the way to here. Wouldn't recommend doing that because, I mean, half of the things in here aren't worth 250 gold ever. There are things that are worth 50 gold. That's not worth 50 gold, for example. So I just lost 50 gold for nothing. The ideal way to look at this, when the tank is in crates... When a tank is in a draw, it's actually not in the shop, right? Like, just pretend it's not there. Yeah, we'll be much happier because remember, there are no refunds. So any decision you make, you either make it too late, then make it too early, and then regret having made it. This also exists, and the main prize is something that you can't actually see when you look in your garage, so... Uh... And do you really want to play this game for 77 wins in 7 days? can get two German containers that have a 10% drop chance each for a tank. And, uh, yeah, that's in here. So it's not really worth it unless you would get 77 wins organically anyway. Because, again, most of these tanks are either average or below average. that are not really worth it. But the crates are free. So if you get this organically anyway, obviously go for it. But if you would have to go out of your way and play extra battles... Don't do that. That is it. not worth right here. And if you log in for 10 days straight, you get the STRV 74A2 for free, among with other things such as 15,000 free XP and 5 times 5s So I think someone's trying to get favors with the community here. I wonder why. But if you log in for 10 days straight, you get the STRV 74A2, which is an interesting little tier 6 with an autoloader, so it can be a lot of fun to play around with. Obviously not going to be something that you spend much time on, but it is quite a funny vehicle nonetheless that can be worth playing a couple of times anyway. Well, let's talk about the two problems here. Now, obviously, Wargaming changing the collector repurchase thing right after they cocked up the matchmaking and pissed away any community goodwill they ever had is a bit unfortunate timing. Maybe it's also deliberate timing to try and shoehorn it under while everyone's still mad about the matchmaking. But um, yeah, that is a very terrible thing and that should definitely not happen. But from a Wargaming business perspective, it kind of makes sense because if you have turn all the premiums into collectors. I'll get to that later. Um, if you turn all the premiums into collectors, you have, now have a lot more gold available on an account, especially if you already have a lot of premiums, so you can essentially just ring trade a lot of premiums with gold uh, without actually spending any money. Well, collect, you can ring trade a lot of correct collectors without any spending any money or spending a minimal amount of money um, to purchase new vehicles because a new tank still costs more than the sell price of a collector. Anyway, but you can like sort of save yourself a lot of money by just ring trading uh, collector tanks around. And Wargaming is not going to like that, which is why they want to milk you further 
by implementing the feature where you have to now pay double for the collector so you can't do that and you have to spend more real money again and pay for example an average of 180 euro on a new vehicle that is sold in crates just to put that in the perspective again so somewhere around 180 euros that's what a vehicle costs if you buy it for charms in a, in a crate so is a vehicle really worth that much is a piece of pixel that you don't own worth that much asking the nft bros out there Re is it really um but essentially the second you buy a vehicle the money's gone like poof money's evaporated but it's already gone this and here's the thing if you complain about changes like for example the collector thing ideally you want to also spend but stop spending money at the same time because if a company sees that you're complaining about something but you're still spending money at the same time they're gonna be like yeah it can't be that bad let's go so that is not great that should not happen but it makes sense for Wargaming because that means that instead of you ring trading gold around that Wargaming makes no money off, you now have to spend real money on buying more and more premium tanks, which is why I recommend very few tanks in general because very few tanks are actually worth it because a mediocre premium tank is never going to be worth the money if a better premium tank exists that does everything better, essentially, and most of the time also costs less. And now, where we get to the premium collector thing. Now, the premiums changing into collectors is not great in the many things because... Like, it's never been a, a promise, really, but it's sort of, like, been a pledge. Oh, we're not going to touch premiums anymore, guys. We only did it once, and it backfired, so we're not going to do it again. So, that's not a law anywhere, essentially. Um, but it kind of makes sense to change premiums into collectors, because if you can't nerf a premium, you're also less likely to buff it, right? Because if you buff a vehicle, you over-buff it, you now can't nerf it again. That's not good for the game. And if you could have a tank class that you can only buff, you're essentially going to get into power creep which is what happens with the premium tanks now, and which is why a lot of premium tanks are simply not worth buying. Wargaming is kind of reversing that by releasing shit premium tanks the least couple of months, like the STRV-81, which is literally a Centurion 1 clone that has no value whatsoever, which is also not worth buying. But, you know, uh, it kind of makes sense to change the premiums into collectors in, in that regard, because you can now nerf and buff them, you can balance them better with tech trays as well, and... As a compensation, you can help sell the vehicle for gold. If it gets nerfed, you can buy another premium tank for that. But that's kind of the problem, right? You have both of these things happening at the same time. And the premium to collector change in isolation, it's not great, but it's not going to kill anybody either. And it can be, can be beneficial to balance. But that change together with the change in repurchase price is one thing. Consumer unfriendly af and i already don't spend money on the game anymore but if i would still spend money i wouldn't spend money anymore so anyway be wise out there only buy the things that are worth it and at the end of the day thank you very much for watching and what do you think about it because my opinion doesn't matter what is your opinion about this whole debacle put it down in the comments a useful discussion is always useful because that's how it works